Um, I, I, I guess you're asking about um, welfare and universal health care and things like that, really, aren't you? Yeah. No? <laughs> Do, I was in a, you realize you won't die. Well, well, I mean, it, I, well, the, the, this is the thing. I mean, the question is who's going to help them, isn't it? That's, Asking a more broader political question. Yeah, so I mean, th th this, this is incidentally why I'm okay with a social safety net and universal health care. Um, it means that there is at least something that is guaranteed to be there to help them. But um, I mean, yeah, I, obviously, I think people who have fallen on hard times and are down on their luck. I mean, the only charity I actually do is giving money to homeless people. But then I know that they've had the money they needed it, and I don't trust charities, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm fine with the social safety net. I think that one of the things that I find interesting about objectivists is the, the, the role of government is generally described to me as the, the only domain that government can have a, a role in is in the use of force. And uh, I'm characterizing that correctly. Um, I'm, I actually, I don't see why the government can't do other things. I mean, who's going to build the roads, I guess, is the, uh, the question. Yeah, answer that one. I mean... <laughs> I mean, I mean, the reason we object to government doing other things, including building the roads, is the only way for them to do that is to use force. So what I object is, is to anybody, anybody, an individual or a group, taking my money without asking, right? So, so using coercion against me. So it's, it's, it, I find it fascinating that if you, if you came to me and said, I, I need help, and I said, yeah, I can't help you right now, and you pulled a gun and took my money, that would be stealing. Everybody in society would accept those stealing, go to jail, we don't accept it. But if you got everybody to vote to take my money, that's okay. Anything that's immoral for an individual human being to do is immoral for a group to do. Well, no, that's, so, that's the point of government, isn't it? I mean, that's, we, we, we no. imbue the government with powers that no, no. an individual can have. No, but that's immoral. That's the essence of immorality. The essence of immorality. So Socrates is corrupting the youth just as we try to do at King's College. And, 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 oh, course, yeah. Yes, right? And, and the group government decided that he was, it was a bad thing and they killed him, right? And so and that's not right. Well, I agree that so, so why is it right to take my money? Because you decide that the group decides that my money it should be taken away from me. It's a requirement for us to live in a society, isn't it? I mean, no. You, you live in a society which is an implicit consent to... It's not implicit because nobody asked me. I, nobody asked me. Yeah, I do not know. want to give my money out. Yeah, but you I, don't leave. Otherwise you'd have to leave. Where would I leave to? I mean, no, I have, a right to li I have a right to live wherever I see fit without people using force against me. That is the essence of, of human life in a society together. That we, uh, the, the, see, the point objectivism makes is the agreement we make when we live in society is not we'll use force whenever we have enough votes to use it. The essence of the agreement we make when we live in a society is that force will never be used against another human being. In, 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 no, not arbitrarily, not arbitrarily, in, in initiation. So if somebody doesn't want to do something, I would never force them to do it. I never really force them to do I mean, it. Like, for example, um, if someone is just refusing to follow the laws, then force, uh, sorry, force has to be initiated against them to make them follow the laws. Well, but it, the law it, isn't necessarily against violence. They still have to have force initiated against them yes. in order to follow the, you know, to, they have to, people but that's have to because be we, following laws. No, because we live in a, we live in a corrupt society. We live in a society well, in which laws are not. No, society is there only as a government to have laws that protect us from violence. There should be no other laws. There should be no other laws. So, so I would say not only is, is something like welfare destructive to, to the person, to me, because money is being taken away from me without my consent, which I, I view as incredibly destructive. It's taking my life, it's taking my time, it's taking my effort without my consent. But I also think it's destructive to the person receiving it, because I think that they are being told, here's a check, don't think, don't produce, don't be rationally self-interested, don't pursue your life, we'll take care of you, you're too stupid to do it yourself, which I don't think 99.9% .9 of people are. And the same with healthcare. I think not only by universalizing healthcare am I getting an inferior product, I mean a dramatically inferior product to what the marketplace could provide. Um, but, 
but we're all getting an inferior product. And, for, and, and, and then what we're telling doctors is, you have to accept this amount of money for this treatment. You don't have any other options. So we're enslaving the doctor and the nurse and the entire medical profession because we believe that it is an essential good. Well, so is agriculture. Why don't we, why don't we so is food. Why don't we nationalize all food production in the world? Right? Food is more important than health. Well, if you don't have food, you're doing with the social safety net, isn't it? With the welfare state. Well, it's what they did in Venezuela, and now everybody's starving. What, what I mean is that they're making sure that, I mean, if the argument is everyone is entitled to X, then having a social safety net yeah. is to provide yes. that X. And my argument is nobody's entitled to anything, and, uh, unless you produce it. And then if you want something that you don't have, ask for it. I mean, if my neighbor came to me and said, look, my son needs a, an emergency procedure. I don't have enough money right now. Could you help me out? I'm more than likely happy to write him a check and, and help him out. But if he comes with a gun at me, if he, come, if he gets the neighborhood to come at me to provide that health care, that's just morally offensive. Yeah, but that's it's morally wrong. Running the purpose of the, 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 the state itself. I mean, the, the state has to be imbued with powers that no one individual can have. Otherwise, you're going to have people being the judge in their own trial and things like this. So we have to, we have to provide the state with... Yeah, so there's one, there's one issue which we have to give to the state because we can't handle it. This is why I'm against anarchy, right? The, 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 there's one issue that you have to extract for society so that markets can emerge and voluntary yeah, trade yeah, yeah. can emerge, and that's force. Yeah, and that's the one control. thing that we have to imbue government with, with protection. It has to be the agency that protects us from frauds and criminals and gangsters and terrorists. Yeah, but that, 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 that's a principled argument. They're making a pragmatic argument. For example, it's going to be cheaper and easier if we just have... Uh, nationalized roads and then pay a small road tax? No, it turns out exactly the opposite. You think so? Absolutely, no question. Really? Particularly today with modern technology, we could have a GPS, uh, you could have a GPS on your car that, that told you exactly which roads and who you have to pay. It could be so cool. I and and the, the owners of the road would take care of the roads so much better and they'd be building new tunnels and new things which, which today government couldn't even imagine to do. Our means of transportation would be a hundred years more advanced if we privatized the roads. Well, the first, the, who built the railroads in, in, in England? It wasn't government. Oh, it was Brunel. Yeah, it was, it was, it was private enterprise. Who, built the first, who, who dug the first canals in, in the United States to transport goods from one place to but another? It becomes, it becomes all useful private enterprise. to more people more often to have these things nationalized. I mean, like, for example, I don't want to have to go through a toll every time I change road. Yeah, but you are going, you know, as a consequence of that, you're getting a, a, a tax system and a whole infrastructure that is massively inefficient in order to fund that yeah, but road. But it means I pay less anyway, because, I mean, if I have to pay a toll on every road, I may as well pay a small you would, amount overall. You wouldn't have to pay a toll on every road. I, I mean, the, the, the idea of privatizing road, I mean, there'd be books written about it. it it's, I mean, there it's, are private roads, and you have to pay a toll to go. Yes, yeah, some private roads you'd have to pay a toll on. Some private roads you wouldn't have to pay a toll on, depending on, on why the road was built and who, who is actually managing the road. Uh, y you could imagine uh, trade associations building roads to get you to the shopping mall because they have a strong incentive for you to oh, cool, yeah. travel to the shopping mall. You can imagine insurance companies building roads for you to drive because they want to sell you car insurance. You could imagine, I mean, the only thing missing from, imag from imagining how private markets and roads, and roads are the last thing oh, to yeah, be privatized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing limiting <laughs> is, is our imagination. Yeah. And I always say, people ask me things like, well, how would the market deal with problem X? And my answer is usually, I don't know. But my experience with markets is mm. that they will always come up with a better answer than anything I could imagine. Because if I could imagine those good answers, I would be a billionaire today because I would have either done it or invested in it. But I can't imagine, you know, if, if the government can't build Yeah, I wouldn't these, want the government to build my phone. <laughs> but, but roads are fine, right? And healthcare, which is it, far more sophisticated than, than this, far more difficult, far more important, far more valuable, I certainly don't want them to do. And education, which I view as the most important product produced by, by in society, that is the last thing I want government to touch. Yeah, but it's, uh, I think it's more about just convenience rather than, uh, rather than innovation in that regard. Some, something that is perfectly, func perfectly functional as it is, like a road, it doesn't need any particular innovation. We just need them done effectively and maintained well across the country. 
I'm happy to let a government do that. I, I, I saw what happened in this country last week when it snowed a little bit. Okay, yeah. no, a little, a little bit. That's a British um, problem. That's a <laughs> it's not a British problem. But it wouldn't happen if somebody had an economic incentive around those roads. If somebody had a self-interested incentive about keeping those roads clear, yeah, they happen wouldn't happen. Late. Yeah, it's so, so snow is, is unusual and yeah. rare. But, uh, but the thing that we're missing is what, what is possible, and I don't have an answer of what is possible because, again, I would make a lot of money if I did. What is possible to transport human beings from point A to point B if we privatize that problem? If we said to, to, to the marketplace, you get to innovate well, the marketplace with regard to transportation of point A to point B. It doesn't. Everything, everything regarding that transportation from the road to the mechanism by which we use train, automobile is regulated and controlled. Well, yeah, I'm not saying they're not regulated, but they're still, it's still a market. It's just a regulated market. Isn't it? And, and, and its, its foundation, the road, is owned by the government. Yes. So it's like, it's like money. It's like you don't get innovation in money with the exception of But that's not saying you can't create a new foundation privately, like with the trains. Well, of course you can because, uh, because the government won't let you, right? And the trains, once the government nationalized them and then privatized them and nationalized you know, them. Yeah, I don't like the way it, it's it, it all it all It all disappears. Yes, originally... In a, in a beginning stage, you could create something new and then they take it from you because it's a public utility. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, should we get another question? Yeah, sure.